Thank you for uh, having me here. I'm going to talk uh, this afternoon about uh, leadership, empathy, and the art of conversation. Um, let me start by giving you a sense of my definition of empathy. Uh, the German philosopher Immanuel Kant talked about empathy in terms of uh, it being problematic, as in this two minds problem. How can we uh, know what's in the mind of someone else? And empathy addresses that. It's through empathy that we can place ourselves in the mind of other people. Um, and I'm going to borrow from Roman Kuznarich, who uh, gives us two uh, facets to empathy. One is effective empathy, uh, and that is when we are able to respond appropriately to someone else's situation, someone else's context. We can mirror their feelings. So uh, when Dave cries, I cry. And, and you know, when Bob smiles, I smile. Um, you can smile anytime you like, Bob. Thank you. Um, cognitive empathy uh, is subtly different in that it allows us to understand uh, the situation, the context, the experience of someone else. We can, as it were, walk in their shoes. And if any of you remember uh, the film Being John Malkovich, uh, you'll recall how the characters actually occupy, literally occupy uh, the mind of John Malkovich and see and experience the world from his perspective. So what does that have to do with leaders? Uh, leaders without empathy uh, can certainly be very successful. And these two gentlemen uh, are good examples of that. So um, in his book about Amazon, uh, The Everything Store, Brad Stone writes this about uh, Bezos. He says, as many of his employees will attest, Bezos is extremely difficult to work for. Employee churn at Amazon is amongst the worst of Fortune 500 companies uh, with single year retention rates. Uh, Steve Jobs, admirable in so many ways, uh, nonetheless is not exactly renowned for his empathic character. Um, Peter Drucker said that um, getting the right things done is a hallmark of good CEOs. And that was echoed in a 2012 uh, study in the Journal of Finance, and, and they reported as follows. They said, performance is more strongly correlated with resoluteness and execution-related skills than with interpersonal and team-related skills. And yet, there is research by British journalist uh, John Ronson who uh, shows that CEOs have four to five times a prevalency towards psychopathy than the general public. And this gives me pause for thought. Um, and I had to put Norman Bates because I thought it would be libelous to put up any psychopathic CEOs. <laughs> so the nature of our workplaces is rapidly changing from a 20th century mechanistic model. And so Ken Robinson has um, a note of caution for us, and he says uh, as follows. However seductive the machine metaphor may be for industrial production, human organizations are not actually mechanisms, and people are not components in them. We are in an experience economy. And yet, as uh, Phil, I'm going to attribute this quote to you, Phil, thank you. Uh, as Phil of Quantum Workplace will tell you, um, the American employed have around two-thirds of them not being engaged. We are at risk of perpetuating as leaders um, what Aldous Huxley, 100 years ago, uh, somewhat presciently described as venues of organized lovelessness. So we shouldn't let performance be an inhibitor of empathic leadership. So the authors of the book Firms of Endearment um, illustrate through their set of human-centered firms that they have outperformed the S&P 500 by 14 times and have outperformed the good to great companies by six times over the last six years. So economists and psychologists alike, uh, whether in the fields of game theory, evolutionary studies, or biological research, um, all of them will attest that generosity and thinking of others is a winning strategy. In other words, we can be successful performers without losing our humanity. 
That's all well and good though, but I would rather think that a more important factor why we should be thinking about empathy and leadership uh, is to do with our attitude towards ethics. Um, and no one loves a perp walk better than, uh, better than I do, or Mr. <laughs> Skilling. The challenge with uh, leadership is that as we move up this hierarchy of management and uh, executive control, we can lose our sense of sensitivity to others and to ourselves. Uh, we can become um, uh, somewhat at a loss to refine our sense of compassion and empathy. And there are studies that demonstrate that this, this, is, uh, uh, th this happens just inherently as part of this process. Um, as we gain power, as we gain wealth, we lose perspective and we lose connection. We become siloed and we become closed-minded. Empathy allows us to step outside of ourselves and to see the world from a multitude of different perspectives. It also enables us to look back and see our behaviors and our actions from a different point of view. So there are many ways that you can develop empathy. Um, I'm arguing for one in particular, and that is conversation. So conversation is the coming together of two people uh, willing to uh, enter into this encounter with curiosity and openness and sharing their thoughts, feelings, opinions, experiences, and more importantly, willing to leave that encounter slightly different than when they entered it. So to embrace the art of conversation, we have to be diligent about our practice of the art. We have to be considerate of our attitudes towards things like curiosity and luck and silence and to courage and vulnerability. Conversation enables us into empathy, which enables us to pierce these constraints around us as leaders. So uh, we have a choice. We have a choice to make as leaders. Uh, the behavioral economist Dan Ariely, uh, he says that when market norms enter our consideration, social norms depart. However, uh, the UCLA professor Marco Iacoboni has found that we are, by evolutionary process, wired for empathy. It takes real effort to form a connection with another human being but we are built to relate to others. So we have a choice. We can choose to use the art of conversation to find our way towards empathic leadership. And that's what I'm gonna encourage you to do. Thank you. Mm -hmm.